Hey, it's Eric back on the bike. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. So a couple days it'll be 2019. And well, maybe it's a little early, but let's start talking about bike choice and the bike that you will take over to France for PVP next year. So the first thing I'd like to say about bike choice is you really don't want to overthink it too much. Yeah, it's important. You want to take a bike that you like to ride, but you're not going to finish PVP faster or better just because of the bike. You're going to finish because of yourself and your leg. PVP is really not all about the bike. It's about you. It's about your strength. It's about knowing how to ride long distances. It's about following some of the tips that I've given in these videos, riding carefully and intelligently. First thing I think you want to look for in a bike is one that is comfortable to ride on, obviously, for a very long time. There's a whole bunch of things that go into comfort, and you know, if you only have one bike, then by all means, you know, take that one. Get it dialed in so it's comfortable to sit on. But it should also be a bike that is easy to ride, that's not too twitchy. You'll find a lot of racing bikes in particular. You need to steer them all the time. The front end's very light in, ter in terms of steering because they're supposed to be. A racing bike, you want to be able to turn very quickly when you need to. Now, that's a little bit of the opposite of what a good random rearing bike is which is one that doesn't take as much effort to ride in a straight line. So there's all kinds of information out there on, on the web about that subject, so I don't go into it too far. But basically, find a bike that's going to be easy to ride, comfortable to sit on, has a decent range of gears. Uh, depending on your strength, you're not going to need really low gears because there are no really steep hills pretty much anywhere on the course. It's all just long, steady climbs for the most part. You know, to illustrate the fact that it's not about the bike, you'll see when you get there, there are many, many kinds of bikes and many very unusual bikes and ones where uh, you might question the sanity of the person riding them, but people finish the event on all kinds of machines from fixed gears to recumbents to tricycles. I've seen elliptigo bicycles out there, the kind of Stairmaster meta bicycles kind of thing. And I'm not sure if we'll see him again, but there's an Englishman named Drew Buck who has shown up in years past on some very old, very unusual bikes. If you go out and Google onion bike guy, you'll find pictures of him riding an old 1920s or 30s retro direct bicycle. <clears throat> Had two gears, high gear you pedal forward, low gear you back pedal. Very heavy, clunky bike. Uh, he showed up another time on a 1900s bike that he found in a barn somewhere. Uh, fitted it a little bit and finished the ride on that bike. So you can definitely finish PVP on almost any kind of bike. Now some things you should look for on the bike that you're going to ride. One is you're going to need a lighting system. That's just required by the, ray, by the rules of the ride. You'll need a headlight and a steady tail light, not a blinky light. Now in headlights, you know, again, you can go out and Google all kinds of information on this. You can Obviously talk to folks that you're doing brevets with about what they use, what they prefer. There's basically two kinds of lights. There's battery powered lights and lights that work off a dynamo in your front wheel. Or in rare cases, a dynamo that runs off the side of the tire or the wheel. Either one of those latter two systems has a benefit of always being there. You simply turn the light on and it works, so batteries to charge up, you don't have to worry about the lights going out, 
in the middle of a dark section. Downside is that there is some cost involved, especially if you want to buy a higher end generator hub. And if something happens to your front wheel, if you happen to have a dynamo built into it, uh, you're kind of stuck. If you put a regular front wheel on, you obviously have no more, no more lighting on your bike. So it might be a good idea to carry a spare battery powered light just in case, even if you do have a dynamo powered light. Now if you have battery powered lights, there are a couple basic kinds there. It's one that works off a, uh, it's called a proprietary battery that you must plug in to charge. And then there are others that work off of commonly available, you know, AA, AAA. The latter has the advantage you can carry spare batteries more easily. You don't need to charge them up. If you find a light that runs on double A's, for instance, you can find those in France if you happen to find a store at the right time. Plug in kind of light, you're just going to have to be watching your run times, watching your charge, and you know, if possible, either carry a spare battery or put one in your drop bag. Now my preference is dynamo powered lights. Uh, the bikes that I usually ride on brevets have a wiring system that runs a rear tail light as well. But that's just my preference. I don't like carrying batteries. I don't like worrying about that. So that's your front light. Now at the other end of the bike, obviously, as I mentioned, you need a a red tail light that has to be on all the time. It can't blink or flash. Although I believe you can have a blinking light if you also have a steady light. You might want to check the rules on that. As far as tail lights go, I think battery powered lights are fine. Their run times are much longer than headlights. You can get a you know a bright enough tail light that will pretty much do all of PVP on one set of batteries. So not nearly the same kind of worry that you have about front lights running out. They generally are quite available in types that use usually AAA batteries. Very easy to stick a couple of those in your pocket or in your bike bag in case you do need to put new batteries in out on the road. Now one thing I will say about tail lights is that your fellow riders will appreciate it if you don't bring one that is too bright. And yes, there are plenty of tail lights out there these days that are way too bright. If you can see the thing a mile away in the daytime, it's too bright at night. You don't need super bright lights. And what they do for the rider behind you is that they make it very difficult to ride with you. You get behind someone who has a very bright red tail light and all you end up seeing is a big red fog. You have to usually go off to the side, go out in front of them, fall off the back, whatever. It's very hard to ride with somebody who has a super bright tail light. So if you're one of those people and you know who you are, you know, please, if you want a bright light during the day, find one that has a daytime and nighttime setting. Portland Design Works makes those right now. I think others do. So you can get a bright light for visibility during the day and then turn to the lower setting at night. Your fellow randomers will appreciate it. Just a few other things about the bike. You might want to consider running fenders. I've done PBP three times. I've gotten rained on every single time, some more than others. Fenders will keep you drier, not dry. They'll definitely keep you cleaner, uh, and especially on some of the French roads where you're riding in agricultural areas, there is stuff on that pavement that you do not want getting picked up by your tire and uh, sprayed all over your bike or your bottle or whatever. So think about fenders, even if they're only clip-ons, they'll help keep you a little more comfortable. If you do run fenders, you can put mud flaps on them depending on how long the fender is to begin with. The flap in front is for you to keep your bike a little cleaner, maybe keep your shoes a little drier. The one in back 
Well, that's not for you. That's for the guy behind you. Just a courtesy to them to prevent that rooster tail from coming up off the road and hitting them in the face. You can also get those in a reflective design. It'll make you a little safer. You should also carry enough stuff on your bike to keep you going between the controls. My bikes generally have some kind of a front handlebar bag, easy to reach into while you're riding and grab stuff out of. I keep snacks in there, cameras and so on. Not a whole lot. Don't bring a big bag because you'll just end up filling it with stuff that most of the time you'll never use. In that front bag or in the rear bag that you might have on your saddle, obviously you want to carry some basics. Tubes, patch kit. You might want to carry a spare tire. Yeah, just in case. I have a couple of times never used it, but you know, as I mentioned, the bike is not really so super critical. You don't need to worry about having the lightest bike in the world out there. Carry a little bit of stuff. Don't go overboard, but carry enough to get you through sort of the foreseeable kind of emergencies you're going to run into. Carry a pump, and that's pretty much the basics. Once you've got all that stuff put together, start riding that bike. You know, if you have more than one bike, obviously, you know, you want to rotate through them. But especially when you get to the longer brevets, you want to ride the bike that you're planning to take to France. Really stretch it out, sit on it for a long time, make sure everything is gonna function correctly, make sure you got all the tools for all the fittings on that bike. Some of my bikes have very particular little nuts and bolts on them. I carry a little tiny wrench that fits those, you know, again, just in case. But uh, start taking that, your bike of choice out on the longer rides. Just make sure it's all gonna work. And you should be okay. And other than that, just make sure that the engine, which is you, is ready for the event. Ride carefully, have fun out there, because that's what it's all about. And I'll see you in the next edition of PVP Tips. Bye.